What is going on, everybody? This is Nick here at Y for Turbo, and we are playing NHL 16 Be a GM Mode with our Edmonton Oilers. And in the last episode, uh, we had a good amount of comments, and one of the comments was to check out James Neal and see what overall he was. So here he is. Here are all of his stats. He is an 87 overall, so he did pop back up a little bit. Not the 88 we thought he might be, but 87 is not too bad. And he is on the Bolts. Look at the Bolts real quick. Uh, wow. A lot of really good players on this team. They're going to be a contender this year for sure. A lot of young guys. Look at this guy down in the uh, in the minors. What's his name? B Point. If it would come up, I could see. Braden Point. He's a playmaker. He's already looking like a really good shooter. Um, yeah, he, he should come up to the NHL for sure. And they have like Yan Palat and obviously like Drew in. And then they kept, they decided to keep Stamkos. Who do they have in net? Who do they have in net? They have uh, Vasilevsky. Pretty cool. And then Kudobin as a backup. Cool. So yeah, they're a little bit of a better team this year than they were last year when we uh, faced off against them. But that's all right. And uh, what else we were going to look at? Um, I was just going to show you the, the lines real quick. Now, last episode, we kind of had a little thing that we wanted to work out. And ooh, actually, uh, I thought I changed the lines to what they were going to be. It must have not saved because I tried to do this before we got into the video. But what I was going to do was actually do this. Actually, let me jump back because I changed a bunch of stuff. Let me just uh, um, let me jump back to it. One second. Okay, so this is what the lines are looking like right now. It kind of, I, I did them off camera and then I think I didn't save it because I, I went and did some stuff before I recorded this episode. So it's finally back. Uh, Dry Sidle, we moved um, from center to right wing. Uh, he was on the wing um, the end of last year, but I made him a natural right winger now just because he's had a really good year there. Um, as for Batan on the second line here, he, um, was a right wing. I changed him to a left wing cause he's left-handed anyway. So he will be rounding out the second line here because a lot of people were calling for that. Even though he's a third line scoring forward, um, a lot of people were saying, just throw him there and throw Perron on the third line. Just so Patan can get those extra minutes and really, really, uh, help out that line. Uh, as for the third line, Perron is there with Dano in the middle. As you see, uh, here, Dano has... 75 face off so that's pretty good not as good as patan's but patan i think you guys were saying would probably be better on the wing shooting the puck and and stuff like that uh rupert's here and then the fourth line is pretty much the exact same it was before uh as for defense this is pretty much the same uh really good core i think we have here and everybody's gonna probably grow throughout the year so that's good special teams looks like this real quick to uh counteract the minutes we did put Perron here on the penalty kill I wanted to put McDavid but uh as you can see Gordon his face-offs are the same but he's actually grown in defensive awareness right now he's up at an 87 so that's really good his body checking is up as well um even though McDavid is at a 90 defensive awareness uh you know if we start to falter I I, I put him here uh on the the three-man PK but um if we start to falter a little bit, we can move these around a little bit. You know, maybe take dry settle off and put uh, put him in. So, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll we'll talk about that and we'll get, we'll get to that. And then obviously in goal, we have Mrazek and Gillies with only McGinn scratched. So, I, I don't think we really need to do anything else. We checked out Neil. We checked out the lines. And uh, I think we just got to get here through preseason. For this season, uh, some people were calling for... Keep injuries turned all the way down during the season and then turn them on in the playoffs. Kind of like uh, what Johnny Superman did in his old NHL. I think probably like the last time he did it was NHL 14. Maybe he did it in NHL 15. I'm not sure. I think it was I think it was 14. Um, but I, I don't know what we're really scouting for now. So I guess we'll go three weeks in each of the, the uh, CHL places. But... This year, we're obviously looking to repeat. We signed Brian Little in the offseason as that second line center to replace Datsuk. Um, Patan has come up and become that second line winger, and hopefully he does get better as well. Um, I'm going to actually stop the simulation here because I might actually bring up another player. You know what? I don't think we need to. Let me see how much... How much uh, can I just look here how much cap we have available? Can I do a proposed trade real quick? Um, 
Okay, so I guess like I can look over at salary cap. We got like five mil available. Does it say here? Yeah, five point nine mil. Okay, so we won't run into a problem um, unless we sign somebody at the trade deadline. I was thinking about bringing up a uh, defenseman to scratch, but uh, I think everybody who was designated. I'm just I'm just gonna make sure. I'm just gonna make sure everybody who is down in the minors is up here, just so we have the the best overall team that we can do up here. Because I know there are some decent overall guys down here in the AHL, but they're still forming. Because we want to be a dynasty, you know. Uh, Slepshev and Manberg here. Yeah, he's he's still a depth forward. So he can still play in the AHL. And he is playing. Uh, these guys are also... Okay, so all these guys should be good down in the AHL. Um, Musil or uh, Austeril. These guys are, or Austerle, whatever his name is. Um, I was thinking about bringing one of them up because they're both 25, 7th defenseman but uh i'll let him play and then if we need him we can bring him up we won't run into a cap issue that that's the biggest thing because last year when we signed datsuk um when we got him in a trade we you know we had to pay him so it was pretty hard to uh keep him up there and keep the team good when there was injuries stuff like that so if if we do end up signing somebody and there's a cap issue oh shoot i guess the uh injuries are not off let me deal with this real quick and i'll be right back all right, so we only have to survive a couple days. I just put Dry Seidel up here and put him in spots, and uh, we'll we'll survive a couple days. That just sucks. I thought the the uh, injuries were off, but I may have turned them back on for the playoffs last year, and uh, they were taken down. So we might lose a few games here with a uh, not complete squad. But this day against Montreal is the day that Hall is supposed to be back in the lineup, so we can probably throw him on like the fourth line or something and uh have them come back because we don't want the whole clendenning thing to happen again that would be awful that would be terrible i think i may have gone just back to the same place we just went to okay go to morale geez this has already started out to be a really annoying gm dang felino what's up need more ice time okay i'll i'll consider it but give me a bit give me a bit maybe i'll throw him on a uh the extras lines or something like that man we haven't won a game yet in the season oh god it's gonna be one of these huh one of these times hall's probably gonna come back pretty soon he might be back after oh i'm okay he's available so i'm gonna put him in right now i'll be right back all right we are back here and uh hall has recovered from his injury so i think i'm going to we'll go to this next oh you know i i was gonna i was gonna play around with Felino and see what we could do um I think what what I was saying was maybe go to these extras lines and uh put them on one of these like instead of Patan I know Patan needs you know some ice time but we'll put uh we'll put Felino on just so that he doesn't have to worry about that because I don't want him dropping because I, I totally forgot he's on the fourth line there and uh, that'll give him a little bit more ice time, hopefully. I just, I don't have any other slots for him. And I, I don't want him to get upset and be way down and then have to play him again. And uh, then, you know, because we traded for him because he was, he was going to help out. So you can see our morale is kind of in the dumps right now. Speaking of which, I should talk to the boys real quick. A couple of them want to talk. Felino, probably about ice time. Oh, okay. He had a good performance. Good job. Let's get that back up. And then uh, Little apparently has not been having the best time. That's okay. We got to get back into it. We got to repeat. We can't. We're starting off, you know, a little shaky. Injuries are on. We got injuries very early in the season. So we can rebound. We haven't won a game yet. There we go. We win our first game. So we are 1-4-2. and two. Um, Not the start. Most were, uh, were seeing the Edmonton Oilers get off to. But we went three in a row there. Uh, let's make it four. Okay, there's a loss. Three in a row, though. That's pretty good. And we rebound with a win after the loss to Minnesota, um, who probably still has Parise and Suter. I don't think they're dumb enough to trade them away. Uh, maybe renegotiate a contract or something, but I don't know if that's too late. It's too late for that now. Oh, God. My game's doing the craziness. Oh, jeez. Please stop. <laughs> This GM mode so far has been full of surprises. Oh my god, it won't stop. There we go. Three weeks. Here we are. I should have just hit OK and just gotten over with it. Um, we're losing a lot of games, but we're losing, we're losing a decent amount in overtime. 
I'm just gonna keep going. Um, after this month, I'll see kind of what the numbers show, and uh, we can make changes accordingly. Because if we're losing games based on the power play, I'll put McDavid on the power play or the penalty kill rather. And uh, if the power play is the problem, though, um, maybe we move that around a little. Because I saw that we have Drysidle centering it. Look at this. Look at this losing streak right here. Wow, four in a row, bad week. Okay, okay, let's just go to this Minnesota game, and then I'll I'll look at the stats right now, and we'll try to make some changes based on that, because I don't think we're in a playoff position right now at all. I think we are uh, probably not even a wild card slot. Hopefully we can win these last... Okay, cool. We win the last two games that we were playing until we check these stats out. Now, uh, qualifying off or whatever, uh, we don't have any outstanding. Let's go ahead and check the stats here. So team stats, um, we'll go for the entire league just to make sure. I just want to see, um, let's see, goals for per game. So the lowest amount here, we are actually, we are actually pretty, pretty low. Like 2.3, that, that's kind of what our average was last year, actually. So that's, were, were we up at three? I don't remember. Three is pretty good, but 2.3, I feel like was kind of where it was a lot of the teams may we have the ability to score more goals though so let's see the goals against per game though um is that the least or the most okay the least right here so montreal let's see where we are we're a pretty good team 2.4 it could be a little bit lower the thing is 2.3 and then 2.4 i want to get this more around two or even lower than that and then this up around three and uh, we'll start to win more games. We just got to score some goals. It just looks like maybe... Um, oh, and our power play percentage isn't that isn't that high. Look at this. Whoa, way down here at 13%. So, yeah, I, I think I'm going to move around the power play a little bit. And uh, let's see our penalty kill real fast. This is the worst ones. And these are the best ones. Okay. Where are we in relation to the best? Oh, geez. Yeah, 76%. So we got to get a little bit better at both positions. So I'm going to... Okay, let's go in and uh, we don't need to look at um, the player stats. I know it's not all their fault. I think just setting up the team the way it's been set up. Not so much here, but in special teams. Because if we go here, we can see dry saddle up here. I think I want the first line to be like the actual first line. And then I want Little to center this line, just like the second line. I, I you know, maybe move uh, Eberly for dry saddle, but I think this, no, I think this is perfect. And uh, let's just put our, um, wow, look, Clendenning kind of went down to 85. That's kind of weird. But let's, um, you know what, that's fine. We'll do, what is Lindholm? Left, 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 right. Um, I know they do this because of the one-timer thing, but I just, I'll just do it like this. And they can shoot however. Um, I'm okay with this. And then as for the penalty kill, I'm going to take... Uh, nah, I'll take dry saddle off it. We'll take dry saddle off it. Because Boyd Gordon, I think, probably is doing okay. And we'll put Connor McDavid in there with Perron. And then, yeah. So we just have our best foot forward at all times. And uh, this, this will be the three-man. So I don't think we need to change anything else. I don't know. Uh, everybody's kind of down in the dumps right now. So hopefully we can get our morale back up. That is probably, uh, it's, it's treading up right now. So let's, let's go on a win streak. We win five or six games in the next, you know, out of the next eight or something. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy with it. We just got to rebound. We got to go over 500. There we go. We start off with a win. We can win against these guys. Yep. Another win. Now it's just routine. There we go. There's a four game win streak right there. So we just, you know. There's a couple little things that you can do with this team to move it around. We we were kind of going with what the the computer was saying go with, and that's not always the smartest play, especially when you've got somebody like Connor McDavid that as much as my coaching style would be like not play him on every line, you got to play a 95 overall on every line, or he's going to drop to a 94 like he did. <laughs> so uh, we only have one loss in the last, what, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games. And uh, which is when we started. I know it's more than that. It's actually uh, 11 games if you count the ones before we restarted the sim. So I'm going to go through the CHL for defensemen again. Uh, by the way, a couple of people were talking about going and getting an elite goalie. And the one thing I um, disagree 
with about that is that we've been kind of cropping these young guns to come out and play with us and uh, it would kind of be a shame just to like throw away the actual growth and rebuild and uh, just try to pick up a goalie that's already been grown in some other franchise when we won the cup last year with an 87 overall so I, I think we're doing okay I think we're doing more than okay McDavid wants to talk uh, he's saying locker room's awesome that's happy that makes me happy that's happy that's happy to hear my friend let's see what the AHL's got to say uh, Chase wants to talk smart decisions thank you and uh, clink hammer he doesn't want to walk in the locker room but that's I think that's because he's not actually playing in the AHL pasture prime buddy sorry can't help it uh, so we lost those two games we rebounded with a shootout win we are now 18 14 and 4 let's go ahead and go to this Saturday and I'll look at the standings we are going to go to the trade deadline in this video which is uh, only a few more weeks away after uh, it's next month actually I think at this point so uh, a win a loss an overtime loss and uh, that will end that little series right there so right now we are second in our division we're not too far out of first uh, especially with our overtime win or overtime losses rather um, but we are pretty close we are one point ahead of the coyotes and uh, what two points ahead of the sharks so everybody below us is very close we're all in a very close vicinity this is a good this is actually a really good division at this point um, in the beginning we were kind of a bad division but all the teams the thing is we play each other a lot so that's why there's a decent amount of losses for everyone but I was looking at um, when I was looking for where James Neal went, I was looking at all our teams in our division's roster just for the hell of it, uh, just to make sure he wasn't in our division, which he's not. He's on Tampa Bay. But uh, we're playing against some good teams. We're playing against a lot of good teams uh, who have a lot of people I haven't even heard of, a lot of young guns that uh, have come up and are, you know, they're at that point where they're, if they're elites, they're around the 86 mark if they've been drafted in like the first or second year. They're right around 86 overall, and they're just they're going to be beasts in the next couple years. But uh, a lot of teams are going to be really bad next year, I feel like, because uh, a lot of the players that got drafted in the first year are going to get off their contracts, and people are going to have to sign them, overpay for a lot of players, and the league's going to be very different. So that's um, did I already? I did not go to OHL. Okay, we can do OHL defenseman three weeks. I'm just going to try to do that, and we'll just scout in Canada because usually. Really good prospects are from there. I mean, you can find diamonds pretty much anywhere, but um, we're we're kind of we're not we're not on those win streaks we were before. So I'm kind of like a little wary. But I know we can't really do much to change it. We could put McDavid on more lines <laughs> and Hall on more lines, but you know, uh, there we go. Win against a conference or our division rival, actually, and we actually lose to the first in our division the Anaheim Ducks who have kind of taken off and uh even the uh actually I think we are are we one point ahead of four I can't math yet oh man I I, I just uh we'll get to the trade then and we'll see but I think we'll be at least if anything we'll be in a wild card slot um we're losing against all our divisional teams though which is not a good thing uh, maybe I should have stopped on uh, the Calgary game because there could have been a rivalry uh, team meeting. Okay, WHL, we will scout for three weeks on defensemen. And uh, let's let's get some wins, guys. Let's just string together a couple wins. Well, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what we can do. There we get a win. Uh, we're going to face James Neal and the Bolts next. And we get a win against them. Nice. And uh, we go back to Brooklyn and get the win against New York. So let's go to the end of this month. And then we can take a look at the stats again before we do our final month of simming to the trade deadline. Um, I just, oh man, I, re I really, really want to be up there in the president trophy race. Um, what? Sometimes I wonder why you and the rest of management make such bad decisions. Is it because you're not getting playing time? Like, I don't really know, dude. I don't know, man. Ah, oh, jeez. Like, I know he's like a third liner, you know, in his heart. But he's only 83 overall. What am I supposed to do, man? 
What am I supposed to do, Felino? There's a couple wins. Man, it seems like the scouting assignment's coming up more, more often. Um, nine defensemen. We can still do three weeks. That's fine. I just want to get some North American boys in here. Uh, oh, trade deadline is early February. Or actually, this is March. Um, what? It's kind of a random... No, no, no. no. What? I mean, maybe a third round pick for this guy? He's a uh, HL top six four. Does he get better? Um, I don't know. He's unsigned, so it doesn't. I mean, he's kind of. I think he's one of the guys that we picked up recently. Yeah, in this last draft. And they they're just giving back a third round pick for him. I mean, he could get better, but he's already twenty one. Yeah, why not? I'll do it. I'll do it for a third round pick. I'll do it for a third round pick, and we'll try to get one more pick out of them. See if we can do that. They approach me, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna rebuttal with something. They can't just say no to it. We'll try to get a, a, a fifth rounder. I don't know if that'll go through, but they want them, so let's see if that'll go through. Trade rejected. See if they'll do a, uh, they'll do one from next year. Maybe we can get a, a, a fourth rounder from next year. Oh, dude, you offered this. What am I supposed to do? So I'll, I'll just take it. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> um, I'm fine with that because they the only reason I would take that is because they they just said that the uh, the rookie class this year is going to be really good, really deep. So um, hopefully in the third round again, we can get somebody who's better than an AHL top six. So we're up to the trade deadline on a point streak, three game point streak, two game win streak. And uh, I will go ahead and show you guys all the stats and then we will go and see who is all available so at 30 24 and 10 it's those overtime losses that are really helping us out we're like the wings from two years ago um even though the sharks have 33 wins we are still ahead of them because of all the overtime losses we you know we lose the games but we take it to overtime and it gets us those points so we can actually make a play for first place in the division so let's go ahead and look at the stats see how far out of the president's trophy we are um because if we're too far out you know obviously that's that's just kind of a consolation kind of thing it's not 100 percent all about that but uh we want to win a cup first and foremost but it obviously would be a cool memento to bring along so the flyers are actually doing really well this year probably uh we should actually see if talbot dropped because that would be heartbreaking if he didn't drop and uh that's okay i you know it was for the best we we get we whew, we got a really good playoff run out of it 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 ended up getting us a cup you know datsuk did retire but we got a cup out of it and you know if cam talbot is still at an 89 overall so be it so be it they can have a good year this year but we are gonna inevitably take them down in the playoffs if they make it that far so this is the entire league so flyers preds Bolts, Caps, um, Leafs, Blues, Canadians, New York Islanders, uh, the Wild, Sabers, Stars. Man, we you gotta go. Oh, man, you gotta go all the way to 16. So we are just um, outside of like what it would be if it was just based on points for the entire league. But if we go to uh, let's go to Western Conference here and look at points. So basically. If we, if we look at it this way. Okay. So yeah, we're, I mean, we're in a slot and we'll probably, we probably won't have to worry about a wild card slot because we can, you know, we, we can get, I think we could do it. I think we could at least get up to top three. You know, we're only two wins out of it. And then, you know, 85 is a little more than that, but two wins and all of a sudden we have the same amount of points as the third place team in the western conference uh eastern conference wise they're a little stronger uh philly is but everybody else is kind of around the same point so actually we're doing pretty well we're doing pretty well for ourselves and uh you know what's the best game plan other than just win games like all we got to do is just win games let's look at points for our team and uh see if there's anybody uh, not producing so uh, Connor McDavid is not on a point of game basis uh, like he was last year um, Dry said on Hall Hall was injured for a few games that's okay 
a lot of a lot of assists for these three guys so that's i wonder where all the goals are going 47 assists where are the goals going you know could have been a uh power play a lot of power play goals probably but uh looks like everyone's kind of producing let's see who isn't though day that's kind of scary actually a minus 10 uh-oh well okay look at his shooting stats you know he's got a a cannon but there's hardly any accuracy there um and at this point he's more of a defend defensive defender who's pretty fast and physical body checking is really good so not too bad i would like him to, if he was even i wouldn't care that he didn't have even an assist but it is his first year in the league so i might have to forgive him yeah hmm. look at that though mcginn got a goal and uh gordon's doing well everybody's doing okay um obviously sean day is kind of scary to me I don't, I don't like that he doesn't have any points at all. It would be one thing if he didn't have any goals, but zero points at all. Being a two-way guy, he's not just a defensive defenseman. That's a little scary. Um, and Mrazic's got decent numbers. You know, both could be higher, but we, we know it's been a rough and tumble year so far. Gillies does not have the best stats, but he is playing backup minutes, and uh, those are backup stats. He never really can get into a groove, so I'm okay with that that's okay we'll um we'll be okay we'll be okay um other than that i think we just gotta look at all the uh all the trades all the trade uh trade blocks and everything like that i actually will go in and we can look at full who's giving away what um i'm not gonna go for a goalie i i think that going for a goalie now would be like kind of throwing away the whole experience you know of trying to get this young crop of players like we are in a rebuild you know what i mean and yeah we have 5.9 million available but what could we bring in that could help out that isn't that you know i was thinking maybe we could potentially bring in somebody um and scratch somebody like felino because felino is talking a lot about his minutes and we could we could uh you know move even Perron down and put Perron somewhere else I don't know we we can figure something out but if we bring in somebody else I think we'll have to put them on the second line and move Patan down but uh I really do think that we need just a little bit more scoring um and I'm not really seeing anything so far we've gone oh we can see here Laterra is upset so potentially we could get him for pretty cheap um he's probably a lot better yeah he's a second line forward playmaker he's probably a lot better than 80 overall but that could also be a trap and he could just be 80 he is like disgruntled though but uh you know it would suck though if he's like an 84 overall that would really suck and it'd be like not even worth it um wisniewski could actually be kind of cool we could put him um just to score some some goals honestly his shooting stats are okay. Um, eh, passing's really good. That might actually be a good move, getting a, a good defenseman, because we've got a really young defense, and uh, nobody's really, like, outperforming anybody. Like, I feel like, oh, Giordano, geez. Um, could be cool, maybe, for a first-round pick, and we could get maybe a little bit back from them. Uh, how many more years? Nope, never mind. Four years, can't do it can't do it that's too much too much and uh i didn't see what he was making but it was probably like seven million dollars or some ridiculous amount for that amount of years uh, i'm seeing a lot of prospects i think this is the year where everybody is still whoa i've never seen someone that mad why is applicator so mad do they just been scratching him that sucks dude that sucks what is he uh rated as second line forward is he like he's probably like an 85 overall he's a good player but i i don't think he'd fit in our organization um i mean he would but just for his overall you know i i don't think it would be the best choice for our team um well this oh yeah that's that one guy that went like first or or like second overall first overall they want to get rid of him? Why? I mean, we could go for him, guys. If we, we could, you know, buy into prospects. I don't know. 
That's strange. Why would they be giving him away in the first year? I mean, if anything, they can just use him for cheap for a while. He's going to be an elite. Like, why risk it? Check this out. Check this out. Rick Nash. It depends on how many years are left, but this could really help. One year remaining, seven mil. We'd have to free some space. Oh, we have to free some space. That kind of sucks, actually. I mean, do we trade somebody, you know, just to get that scoring slash physical touch? A little bit of defensive awareness. Uh, he's really not as physical as I thought his stats, rather. He's strong, but he doesn't have, like, the body checking I thought. I thought he'd have, like, 89 body checking or something. Uh, decently fast. Obviously a great shot. Power forward, though. That's interesting. Rick Nash could be really cool. Hayes could also be kind of cool. I've always liked him as a player. Kevin Hayes. He's not really going to grow too much more. And we don't really need a second line right winger. We already have Eberle. So I don't know about that. But Rick Nash could move right into the second second line. We could put him on the first line power play and kind of shake up the lines a little bit for power play. Let me know if that's something we might have to do and let me know who we should potentially trade to free up some space. Because um, obviously we're, uh, we've got a lot of cap in the top line. So it's going to be kind of difficult to manage getting a big gun who's already making a ton of money, especially somebody like Rick Nash, who is kind of notorious. I know this is a video game, but kind of notorious, not for producing after people acquire him. Uh, so maybe that's why they're getting rid of him. I always liked Barchi, and I always thought Sven Barchi was going to be way better than what he became. You know, he's still got a good amount of years in real life, but like, you know, kind of sucks. I would totally have rolled the dice on him a few years ago in the first round. Uh, Downey, I don't think we need. No, more prospects. A lot of prospects here, and then we're back to Anaheim. So let me know what you guys think. One of the things I was kind of thinking about was maybe, um, I don't know, maybe trading away a lower rostered player, even somebody like uh, McGinn, who is just sitting on the bench the entire time, and then when we need to, we call up you know people who are making under a million dollars in the playoffs but you know mcginn is somebody who in the playoffs it'll be pivotal because injuries are back on bringing a grinder into the lineup will be kind of cool you know uh so yeah let me know also um just was going to show you guys free agents as well um tourist is still available so we potentially could get tourists uh free up some space for him as a center uh which i am also not against that would be kind of cool and we don't have to worry about uh, really, we could trade somebody away for uh, to alleviate some cap tension and uh, maybe get a pick out of it. And then we pick up tourists with money. So we get tourists. We get potentially, you know, like a first or a second round pick. And uh, all we had to do was spend money and get rid of a player, you know, that tourist, uh, tourist fills the area with. And he only wants one year. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you so much for all the support lately. The channel has absolutely exploded with support and tons of comments, tons of new faces in the comments. And uh, make sure to hit that like if you dug it and want to see the next episode. And uh, subscribe if, uh, if you want daily videos on hockey and basketball and Madden and uh, Pong. Anything you can imagine is true at Y for Turbo. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time out on the ice.